one of the greatest trilogies in all of fantasy novels. And in one of the greatest trilogy in all of the movies in the world. Here it is, the legendary finale for the almighty Lord of the Rings. Hello fellow book questers, it is I, Aaron the Book Quester. Today I have this awesome, epic, one of my favorite books in all of history. The Return of the King by J.R.R. Tolkien, The Lord of the Rings, Part 3. And well, let's get right on to it. So today, I am not going to talk about how Aragorn marched to the Black Gate and Frodo destroyed the ring, but the Gollum kind of helped. No, I'm not talking about that because you all know that. Um, and if you don't know that, you should, or most people do. And so today, I'm literally just talking about this story after the movie. And by that, I mean that the movie kind of cut funny and creative parts that J.R. Tolkien had, had put in at the end of the book, and it's quite a lot of pages, so I'm thinking that I'm gonna talk about that. So, when I was reading this book, I instantly felt this weird feeling that if even if all the storyline that I knew were completed, it wouldn't finish a uh, quarter of the book, maybe? Because the Battle of Minas Tirith was over, Frodo was about to throw the ring into the lava, but it was only about this much. And, well, it's absolutely ridiculous, because by then I knew that the story was pretty much over. But in the book, J.R.R. Tolkien had a little bit of a parting gift to us. First of all, the Hobbit and the King and Aragorn and everyone parties a lot longer. Or even if those scenes were included, the movie I mean, the movie definitely didn't want any of those like not action-packed scenes, so they just cut it short, I feel like. And I also do understand that in the movie, the action th scenes were like super long and super cool. And I love that about the movie. But definitely, the book definitely had a little bit of a shorter action scenes, but much more detail. And in that way, it is much more fun. And one of the most major things that is different from The Lord of Rings that I have mentioned in book 2, Saruman is alive. He wasn't killed. He wasn't killed by Warm Tongue. He's fine. Which is super annoying. And we find him after Frodo and and uh, Merry and Samwise and Pippin and everyone's done and they're going back to Shire. They find Saruman and his little pet Warm Tongue. And together they're looking like beggars and they look really really bad. And Mary gives him gives him a little bit of tobacco to smoke with, but they don't show much mercy because Sermon is an incredibly horrible person. But when they go to the Shire, uh, it's, it's pretty bad. S some gangsters and ruffians is taking over the entire Shire, and now it's surrounded by walls. And those gangsters and ruffians are just taking all the all of Shire's products, you know, tobacco and crops and food and everything and there's this one guy named Big Sharky who apparently is the gang's the biggest biggest baddie and and Mary Pippin Frodo and Sam ridiculous because the hobbits they've gone through so much hardship they've killed orcs they've seen battles that would never be repeated in a hundred thousand years and Bridgens all have taken over their home. Ridiculous. So, our dear friends, well, our four hobbits went in. And they knew how to use a sword. They had slayed orcs after all. And they swung their swords. And these Bridgens and ruffians, they were mostly like, Give us your money at this big club. But I totally don't know how to use it. You know. And, uh, and they weren't used to hobbits with with a sword given to them by the king of Gondor and they were friends with the king and everything and they were good at sword fighting and these hobbits were strong and yeah bye bye Bridgens ruffians and they roused the hobbits and they dealt with those annoying ruffians and Bridgens and they came finally 
to Sharky's house. And can you guess who Sharky was? I did say something about, you know, the, the big ass Saruman. He was there and he was chilling and I imagine him a little bit fat with with maybe lemonade in his mouth. Of course this is my imagination. And he's just chilling. Getting all the all the good things from the shower, all the food, all the drinks, everything. And he's just chilling. And the hobbits go there and they're like I knew it, because Gandalf had warned them that even though Saruman had lost his powers because Gandalf broke his staff in part 2, the two towers, he can still do a little bit of mischief, a little bit of um, annoying things, say. So that's that, and really Saruman is, well, quite one of the major differences, but his death is pretty much the same. Wormtongue draws a sword, draws a hidden knife and stabs Saruman 16 times or whatever and he dies because of pretty much the same reason in the movie because Saruman was abusing Wormtongue and that's exactly what happened and I think it was an extremely good book and the other parts are same Frodo going to the new land with Gandalf and the elves and Sam finishing the book that Frodo named and actually, what's interesting is that Frodo named his story, the story that he wrote, well, which is, you know, an hour, an hour one, the Lord of the Rings trilogy, you know? And Frodo names his own journal, his own, his own story, and he writes, on the title page, on the journal, he writes, The End of the Lord of the Rings and the Return of the King. Of course, it's not the exact same as the... As the books that we read right now, the book that Frodo wrote, but I think it's you can have some references like this. The third part is called The Return of the King, and the other part and the entire entire trilogy is called The Lord of the Rings. So it does make sense. And what I think what that means is that first of all, the end of The Lord of the Rings because of Saruman's um, ring ring's power was dead. The other ring's power, such as the three elf rings, one which Gla Gladriel has, and one which Gandalf has, and one which some elf lord has, they lose their power. So, it is truly the end of the Lord of the Rings, because Gandalf, Gladriel, and the dwarf lords, and the men lords, they're, they're all lords of the rings. But now their power has ended, so it is the end of the Lord of the Rings. And as for the return of the king, we all know what that means. King Alessar Elfstone, who is also known as King Aragorn, had come back to the city of Gondor, and now he rules in peace and prosperity. And so the book ends, so the awesome trilogy ends, and it was an incredibly momentous day when I finally finished the book. And it was definitely more easy to read because it wasn't something all I expected. And that, that part about the Hobbits and the Shire and Sauron, that is very fresh. And that really made it a patient much more than the other books because for the other books I basically knew what was going to happen, you know what I mean? And so, that was it. And like always, your book quester, Aaron the book quester. The Lord of the Rings is an, is an absolutely awesome book and it is one of, should be, on your must read list.